Welcome to the third module of the Business Management Capstone course. Since you already know the structure of Blackboard, we're going to just jump right into the module. Of course, first we have the learning objectives for the week, the assignment summary, which I'll cover here in a moment, the module three uh, course content. Make sure you're reviewing this information. We're now introducing the textbook to you this week. Review the chapter one PowerPoint presentation. I have key financial ratios for you to review. Information about the uh, smart book that you'll be utilizing throughout the course for the, for the e-text. The global simulation information, again, you know, continue reviewing that um, as well. Next, we have the Chapter 1 Smart Book. Now, this is very similar to Learn Smart, just a little bit more advanced. So if you're used to um, using Learn Smart in the past, exact same concept, read the chapter, answer questions, so on and so forth. Next, we have the course participation, which is a discussion board. You will be focused on competitive advantage. You will be choosing one of the companies from step one. And in step two, you'll be analyzing that company for what is their competitive advantage. In step three, you will re be responding to at least two other posts that your fellow uh, classmates have uh, entered. Keep in mind, if you don't respond to two, you will be deducted points. Next, we have the chapter one quiz, which will be 25 questions, multiple choice. You will have 40 minutes to complete it, and you will also have uh, two attempts at the quiz. Lastly, we have the practice round year seven within Globus. Clearly, you should be familiar with Globus by now. You should know what's going on. You also should realize what you should be doing this year for the year seven practice round. Now, let's take a look at Globus and see what happened in year six. Here we have the results for the year six scoreboard. As you can see, company A is in first place with 106. They have a pretty nice lead, and 106 is a great score for the very first year. Company C is at 93, company B is at 91, so they're not too far away from company A. Company D is at 77, that's a decent gap there. And company E at 67, that, that concerns me a little bit. I know this is just a practice rounds, so you know, it's okay. But just, you know, keep in mind, you, you really want to be within probably about 20 points if you have hopes of catching, you know, another team in, in the future. So uh, come to E, you know, definitely, you know, analyze your decisions and the ones from the other companies to determine, you know, what you may need to change in order to uh, close that gap. So if you scroll down, you have the game to date scoreboard and the scores are all the same except bonus points. So if you want to know what the bonus points are or the investor expectation score, best in industry, weighted average score, if you scroll down to the bottom, you see that information. Uh, the bonus, bonus points information would actually be within the manual. But as you can see here, company A is at 106, did not receive a bonus point. Company C did, they received one at 94. Company B is at 91, company D is 77, and company E, they actually got a bonus point. So that's 68. So that's the overall game to date scoreboard. So each week we'll talk about that year scoreboard and then we'll go down and take a look at the game to date scoreboard, which is basically the same this week. Now, what I want to bring to your attention now, though, is on the left hand side here, you're going to see uh, page one, page two, page three, page three, B, four, five, six, seven, which one is the scoreboard. Uh, two is earnings per share, return on equity, and stock price. I'm not going to go through these one by one. I do want to draw attention to them, though. For example, earnings per share. Company A is at 182. They're highlighted, so obviously they're best in industry. But you see another company that is bolded, company C, at 130. So if your score is bolded, that means you met expectations. If you're highlighted, you're the one that's best in the industry, such as company A. So if I click on page three, you see the credit rating and image rating. Then again, I'll let you look at this. Uh, one thing I want to point about credit rating is a lot of teams really worry if they're at a C, and luckily right now everyone's at B plus or, or higher, that they should be concerned. And what I tell every team is, Credit rating, it just it kind of comes, so you don't have to worry about it as much. So the teams who are at B plus right now, they're probably at B at A before they know it, just as long as they don't make any truly bad decisions. 
So obviously I want you to go through the rest of pages, but another page I want to point out to you, it's under the competitive intelligence report. It's the comparative competitive efforts. Okay. So right now this is only showing North America. Obviously there's more regions beyond North America. So I'm only displaying one region right now and I'll let you do the other regions, review them. But as you can see, for the price for the camera, company A charged $325. And as you know, company A is leading the, the simulation so far. Company B is at 225, C is 250, D is 240, E is 225. So the average is 253, but clearly company A is throwing off that average because they're at 325. And if you throw them out, I mean, average looks like it's around 235, 240, uh, give, or, give or take. Okay, So you would say to yourself, well, company A is leading... What's the difference? Well, let's let's look at a few things without giving away their strategy. Okay, so number of models, they have four. Well, company E has five. Okay, the PQ rating though on company A is four point five. That's the highest. Okay, so you would think in your mind they should be able to charge a little bit more. The warranty period is three hundred sixty days, and while most have you know sixty or ninety or upwards of one eighty, they have a complete year for the warranty. So just want to point out a few uh, values here. Uh, let's go ahead and go look at the drones. Okay, so for the drones, company A is at $1,200. And company D is at $1,200 as well. Okay, so let's look at the PQ rating. PQ rating for company A is 3.8. Company D is 3.8. Oh, very close, right? Number of models, 3 and 3. Okay, warranty, 180, and company D only has 90. Okay, so can that make a difference? So let's look at the market share. Company A has a 21.4 market share. Company D only has 18.9. Actually, company E has a 20.8. What's the difference, though? Well, they're only selling for 1,100. They only have two, two models. The warrant period is only 60. So you have to look at all these different options in order to understand how you're going to beat out the competition. And I'm telling you, the answers are all within these different reports if you take the time to figure it out. Now, am I telling you to mimic another company? I'm not telling you that because if everyone's the same, then you're basically fighting it out for, you know, if you're all high end or low end or middle ground. You know, sometimes you don't want to be the same. Maybe you want to be that, that outlier that's, you know, charging a little bit more. Only you will be able to determine if that's going to work by analyzing your decisions and to see what you can kind of get away with price-wise. You know, can you charge more? Do you have to charge less in order to compete? And um, it does take a few years to figure that out. Obviously, this is practice year six. Then you have practice year seven. And then we'll, we, we will reset the data. And then we'll start with a true year six. So that should help you out once it comes to that true year six of where you want to start at after having these practice rounds. Well, that concludes the video. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to me. Have a great week.